Well, it pains me to say this, but my time with Zen Sam's has almost come to an end. (laughs) Uh, But your time doesn't have to because you can follow all the things Zen is doing uh, through her website and uh, through her various social media platforms. Uh, Just find her at zensams.com. That's zensams with an X. That's right. You got it right. I know. It must be the sobriety. Uh, I always say Z. Even though I know it's an X, I see the X, but I always say Z. So, Zen, apparently you're pretty influential because uh, Forbes uh, just did a whole article, a whole profile on influ- on influencers, and the person that they chose to profile and feature is you. And I appreciate you mentioning this show and me and your occasional radio appearances with me in that article as well. Uh, tell us about this uh, this Forbes uh, profile. W- w- what makes you so special? Why did they choose to focus on you? I was incredibly honored. I received a phone call from uh, Joseph DeSantis, who's the luxury fashion contributor at Forbes, mm. and he has contributed hundreds, uh, if not, I don't know, thousands of articles in his, in his category. And he said, um, we're looking to do a story on influencers, media contributors, and a hybrid actor, so to speak. And it pointed to my direction because that's exactly what I have been preaching for the last, I want to say, year, that we are in a digital process, that the world is shifting, businesses are living on social media. We have a huge number, 68% of women and 32% of men out of 1 billion active social media users are on the internet every day, sometimes multiple times a day. That in, in rough numbers, that breaks it down to 560 million women versus 360 million men. And social media is a huge platform. And these big businesses have now been able to think small again with social media. And they are reaching out to influencers like myself, who I'm not just an influencer, I'm an act, a, a trained actor, media contributor, but has, who's been able to take my training and spin it. And, and what I've done essentially is I've managed to make my transition through Zoom right. and filter my voice through a microphone. Well, Zen, give, and that's what the article is about. Give a little bit of uh, advice for people watching in our audience right now who, uh, as you mentioned, everybody's on social media, which means everybody has everybody is a brand. Whether they realize it or not, they're putting an image out there to the world. Um, what suggestions would you have to people, be they, uh, whether they're in the media like us or just normal people that are interested in maybe getting out a political viewpoint or uh, knowledge about a, a certain event? Maybe they're artists, maybe they're just interested in projecting their best self forward. Whether you're interested in looking to persuade someone to date you or persuade someone to vote for your candidate, what tips can you give people in terms of making their social media more impactful? Well, the most important thing is make sure you have an active Instagram and Facebook profile. Those are the two most widely used platforms. Um, And Instagram has allowed people to um, use 24-hour stories to give insight into people's lives. And the first thing I will recommend to any brand, any business, is find your social media presence and figure out what your story is. It's a story that's unique to you. You could be a jewelry designer, but people might want to look at your Instagram profile because of the way that you're cooking your meals with your four-year-old daughter at home after your long day's work. They might be more interested in what designs you have because they're touching close to home from a story that they related to. So allowing the customer to see the insight on a 24-hour basis, which we call the 24-hour feeds on Instagram, allows businesses and companies to look in on one on, on each other. I'm able to see what you're doing on a 24-hour basis, Frank. You could see what I've done on a 24-hour basis. The same thing par- parlays to Chanel and Dior and Tom Ford and Ramey Brook, all these companies that are on social media that no longer now have the foot traffic they still need to connect to their audience. And the way that they connect to their audience, their demographic, their customers, essentially the people that will purchase their product over somebody else's is because they hit close to home. They've touched something in their moral, ethic beliefs that perhaps is swaying them to make the purchase with that specific you know, company versus another, Adidas versus Nike, so and to speak. And the people, um, I'm sure they've seen some images of the, uh, the article that we're talking about on the television set, but if you want to read the whole article, what I'd like to do 
uh, Nico and Jessica is actually if we can link to Jessica's uh, if we can link li- if Jessica and Nico if we can link to Zen's article on Forbes on the Liquid Lunch TV Facebook page. I want to ask everybody whether you're watching on Biz TV on Facebook or wherever you watch. I uh, want to make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page. You just go to YouTube and search Liquid Lunch TV. Click the subscribe button because we are moving on up in the world of uh, of the YouTube. Last month we took in ready for this one hundred forty four dollars. In terms of uh, <laughs> ad revenue from YouTube, so it's only going to grow, uh, and we need something to um, keep keep us in martinis and wine uh, during and after the show. So the more you subscribe, the more you share, the more you click the ads of the video on the videos that you see, the more we get to enjoy liquor at uh, our advertisers' expense. 